Hello everyone! Under my previous video I got a comment telling me that I apparently do not show my face enough on my YouTube channel. And that's true. Over the past 8 years that I'm doing this now, I rarely show my face and you mostly just see my hands and sometimes hear my voice when I do tutorial videos. But yeah, my face has been pretty absent and that's true. So for this now I thought what could I talk about like directly to you in the camera showing my face that came from more of a personal side of me when using instruments uh, like modular synthesizers um, and that was not a tutorial or a music piece. You know, something in the style of a video blog with lots of jump cuts. The first thing that came to my mind was, well, the experience of researching, buying and then playing a search format modular synthesizer. Again, this will not be a demo video, this will not be a sound demo or a tutorial, this will just be me talking about my experience I've had with this device. And it's actually almost exactly one year ago that I bought this. Um, so I've had a bunch of time to, to play with it and also to think about it, what this means uh, for me with my background in Eurac modular synthesis. Um, I've also started with the tiny sizer back in the days as my first modular system, you know, using those tiny patch leads, which I'm back to now with the AE modular system I'm using. And I've also had like a 5U modular, um, a, t a tiny one, well, if you can talk about tiny 5U modular. So at the beginning of last year, I thought, well, what else is there what I always wanted to try out? And um, of course, a search system was high up on the list as well as a Buchler system, but you can probably come up with a reason or two why the Buchler didn't make it in my modular synth packs wardrobe. All right, so what is a search format modular synth? You've heard the name, I assume, already, and you probably also know that it's four rack units high and that it originally uses banana plugs. Um, which I can hold into the camera, you know, those ones. But let's jump back and just go over the brief history of where this came from. Back in the days, there were the Moog modulars, which were hugely expensive, and then there were the Buchla modulars, which were also hugely expensive. So for your average musician, those were unobtainable. And uh, if they wanted to do modular synth, then they were just out of luck. But then this nice guy, Serge, came along and said, well, I'll just provide schematics, you know, circ diagrams of certain modules, and you just build them yourselves. That means that you can source all the parts yourself. You will have the joy, hopefully, of building the thing yourself and also customizing it to your needs. And then at the end, you have a modular, which is way more affordable than the pre-built ones you can buy in the store. And this is still the concept today of all of this stuff. It's really your open source modular system that you have to build for yourself or if you can't or don't want to do that because not only you need DIY skills but you also need a lot of time then you can of course uh, commission builders to make these things for you and that's of course where it can get really pricey it doesn't have to be but um, yeah sometimes it can and um, it's mostly a little bit more expensive than Eurorack but um, depending on where you look, it's not much more expensive. So it's not like this Buchler jump of having to sell your house or anything like that. Let's talk about the design of the front panels a bit now because this of course also has a DIY background. As you can probably see, the jack sockets and the knobs and the switches and the lights, they're almost always spaced equally apart from each other. And this means that actually the basis of this whole front panel is just you know a metal plate Drilled uh, with holes, with holes drilled into it on an evenly spaced grid. So why is that? Because when you build your synthesizer from all of the tiny parts up to this, then you might want to customize it here and there. And if you just had you know pre-made or pre-drilled, pre-designed front panels, then you couldn't easily, for example, add a knob to an oscillator or add an LED somewhere that would suit your way of using it a lot better than without it. So you would normally just buy those front panels pre-drilled in a grid pattern and then you would just add your switches and your sockets um, however you liked. So you could have a VCO that just takes those two columns of, um, of, uh, of holes or you could just make it wider and add some more stuff or reduce it and leave some stuff away. And this is also where the term which you might have heard a paper face comes from because you would have just you know a blank metal panel with holes in it and if you didn't need a hole well then you might want to cover it and also because it was blank there were no descriptions 
what the knobs and the sockets would do. So you would take a piece of paper and you would just write or print the description on it and then drill the holes into the paper that you needed and all the unused holes of the metal panel would be covered. All right, so then let's jump to the future, to 2018 and to the thing I bought here. So I did a little bit of research and then um, decided to buy a used system because I didn't want to spend the time and the effort to build it myself. And I also didn't have the funds to buy a newly designed or newly built one um, from a builder like just for me. First I had to get the cash and to get that I sold a bunch of stuff that was also very dear to my heart. For example, the Vermona DRM drum machine had to leave, unfortunately. Also my Teenage Engineering OP1, my Octatrack, and a bunch of other stuff, um, yeah. But I wanted to experience something new and that was the price then, I guess, because as I told you in my IKEA PAX video, I don't want to exceed this space and yeah, also I just need some money. And then after a few weeks of research, I found the offer of this best of CGS surge system. It was in good shape and made by a reputable builder and we had nice contact with the seller um, over the Muff Wiggler forums actually and um, yeah so I got this shipped to me and I still remember like when it came I wrote my buddy Volk an email and he came over and we just put it on the table and just patched and we didn't know anything what was happening and it was like very fun and also a little bit confusing um, and this confusion would last for me quite a while after that still because it's just such a different beast. And I also actually discovered that um, in this search format, there are also different designers acting because it's not all search, which is for you, obviously, or maybe not. Like for me, it wasn't that obvious. I thought everything was kind of based on search. And of course, somebody probably did a braids in for you as well. But yeah, the classic ones were all search. Um, but then I realized that, no, okay, that's not true. And I actually have very little search in my system and a lot of CGS, which stands for Cat Girl Synth and is basically the brand of Ken Stone, who um, is a very cool guy, actually, um, because he also put like lots of circuit diagrams out there on his website. It's like a big, deep archive of modular synth knowledge there. And it's uh, really fun to dive into these things if you're a little more nerdy and uh, DIY interested. And well, it's and well, actually, it's named the best of CGS uh, trifecta, basically, because you have three pre configured boats, and uh, they contain Yeah, mostly um, Ken Stone modules, uh, which are in the uh, style of search, of course, and there are a bunch of search modules as well, of course. Um, but most of the stuff is Yeah, CGS. The top boat here is called the bog and that's basically your voice panel. You got two oscillators, you got a wave shaper, you got a mixer, you got two VCAs, you got a voltage controlled filter, um, then you got your dual universal slope generator which we'll talk about in a minute because that's like the classic surge module and then we have like a voltage controlled divider like a frequency divider or clock divider and a utility LFO which is not really in the style of search, but it's very handy to have this as like a preset LFO module. Why is that not in the style? Because yeah, this dual universal slope generator is actually also not just the classic search module that everybody knows and that the Make Noise Maths Eurorack module is um, inspired from, but it also shows um, the concept behind the search patch programming. And this usually means that you have like a very complex module. You basically have all the tiny parts of the module out there on the front panel and then you have to patch it with itself or other parts of the modular system to make it do certain things. And with the case of the DUSG, the dual universal slope generator, you actually have a module actually, two modules in this one, which can act as an attack decay envelope. They can be an LFO or a one volt per octave VCO. It can be a slew limiter, voltage controlled. It can be a voltage controlled trigger delay and probably lots of other stuff. But by itself, like right now, it doesn't do anything because to get anything out of it, you have to patch it with itself um, to yeah, do any of those things I just mentioned. And this is actually really fun, but it also requires you to research quite a bit and um, find manuals, although, although there's not much available in that regard. Um, so you have to spend quite a bunch of time with these things um, 
to get familiar with them and it's uh, a bit more difficult than with your typical Eurorack or Moog or uh, 5U modules actually. Now the bottom row that is called the swamp and that is a sequencer panel. You've got your eight step sequencer or actually four of them, four rows of eight step CV. Um, you've got a logic module, you've got a clock divider, you've got a gated comparator which is also a gate and CV sequencer, a really cool one, look into that. Um, and you've got a noise source which is nice for your random CV. So here comes the middle panel then which is called the marsh and that is, well, that gets really crazy quickly. On the left we have two extended ADSR envelopes which yeah, are not that different actually but they do have a delay stage at the beginning. Um, everything is voltage controlled and you have two inputs, a gate and a trigger input. And they behave differently and you can actually get some really weird shapes out of it. And there's like a very good article which I hope I'll find again and I'll put it in the video description for you to check out because this is not just your ADSR envelope. Then you have a dual VCA again. And then comes the modular magic, which I also wrote a Moffigler post about explaining how it actually works because when you look at the the schematics and the notes uh, around this module, I think it's very difficult to grasp actually what it's about. Although it is really in the style of Ken Stone where you have like basically a very simple concept like the mathematical modulo concept, you know, where you define a range and then you input values into that range and as soon as the inputs in exceed the range, they will just start back from the beginning. So it always wraps around. Um, and this is, for example, useful when you want to constrain a control voltage, for example, for pitch to one octave, like one volt. You can just say everything is just zero to one volt. And when they exceed this range, then the CV will just wrap around and start from zero volt again, for example. But of course, this can all be CV controlled and added and subtracted and it gets really crazy fast. So, um, yeah simple concept but very complex module actually. Then we have a wave multiplier and then another crazy module, the infinite melody, for which I also done a Moffigler post explaining how it works. You'll find those two also in the video description of course. Then we have a CV cluster, which I think I also should post a thread about, um, two slope detectors which will tell you if the control voltage is rising, um, static or falling. And then we have a dual CV processor, which is basically two attenuating mixers for control voltages. Okay, so what happened after those arrived and I spent some time with them? Well, at first actually I just played mostly with the bog because that was um, the thing I was most used to as a modular synth user. You know, just oscillators, filters, VCAs, envelopes and a mixer. Um, you can very nicely self-patch just this boat and create some really fun um, performances with it. So uh, Google that or look at that up on YouTube um, and you'll find some nice examples, I think. Um, the next uh, boat I tried out then was the uh, Swamp, the sequencer panel, because also that is, at least on the right side, quite a traditional setup there. Um, and then it gets a little more unique at the left with this gated comparator. Um, and then, of course, this one would sequence the bog and you can get a little more variety or also like a little more traditional note sequencing out of that combination. Um, this one by itself, uh, I actually did a video just patching this by itself um, and it's very experimental. So this by itself is not really, I think, that useful, but the bog by itself definitely is. And um, so if you're just looking to get one boat, I think this is the one I'd start with. Of course, apart from those pre-configured designs, there are also lots of other options in the 4U format. Um, you can also get like half size uh, front panels with custom module configurations behind them. Um, you also have, of course, Eurorack uh, modules uh, using cir circuits and um, there are a lot more uh, possibilities. Um, this was just, as I said, like something that I got a good deal on and that uh, looked very interesting and complete as a setup. Of course, once you've got this, you need a power supply, um, which in my case could actually be a typical Eurorack power supply. I just got like a Meanwell, um, a Meanwell PSU for minus and plus 12 volt. And that was also the, the correct voltages for this system. Um, I think there are also other voltages, maybe 15 volts um, and also old modules also used, I think a six volt 
additional power supply to their main power supply, something like that. So definitely do some research there um, before you commit on buying something so that you can get a proper power supply. And then of course you need some kind of adapter if it's not included in the module somewhere to go from banana jacks to a mixer input, which normally uses those TS or TRS jacks. And for this I actually built myself a simple format jumbler which I stuck under here. I'll just put a picture there, I think probably. And um, what this does, it just um, connects three different kinds of sockets. The banana socket, 3.5 millimeter TS socket and a 6.3 millimeter socket um, so that I can just patch anything um, into anything else. I also just now picked up a spring reverb which I find works very nice with those uh, sash systems. Um, I got the spring reverb from Klangbau Köln, you know, the maker of those modules here, which you can also find a bunch of stuff about on my YouTube channel. Um, and I built that like in, at the back of the of this uh, this thing here in the rack. Okay, so lastly, what was my experience in this year of using this, and how do I feel about this? Because uh, yeah, it's not just a new format when it comes to size and cables. Also, banana cables rock. They are the best cables for modular synth, hands down. Um, but yeah, as I said, for example, the layout of the search with its grid layout is actually sometimes not very intuitive. And this is also a criticism you can hear um, from other people that because every knob is the same size and more sometimes even the same color and um, the sockets are all aligned in this grid, your eye sometimes has to search quite a long time for the place your hand wants to go. And in other systems like a Buchler, for example, you might have different sized knobs and they won't be in the grid layout, but they will be more prominently featured somewhere if it's like an important knob, like a filter cut of frequency. For example, in this filter here, we have, you know, the cut of frequency is actually, and see, I already have to look, is actually this one. And then the CV attenuator is this one, resonance is this, and this is the audio input. So yeah, it's not really very quick to find it if you don't really know the module very well. But of course it's very useful um, for this DIY aspect where you can just have this grid plate and then populate it with controls like you want to. And with this layout and also the fact that some modules require a little bit of deeper research and um, when trying to understand them, it also means that you have to sometimes think a little bit more about your way of patching. And um, this of course can be a good and a bad thing. If you just want to quickly patch something up, it might not be as easy to deterministically get a result like it is with other formats. But um, it also means that when you commit to something like that, it can make you, I think, a better modular synth musician or user um, and it certainly had this effect on me where I think like doing this research even like on a circuit level of these modules has opened up my mind a little bit um, to certain ways and um, I got a comment under like a Klangbau Köln Eurorack uh, jam session where somebody was like hey you're patching this like a surge and I was thinking yeah well you're right actually I it my mind has been somehow wired differently with this machine um, and it's fun um, it's not yeah, something super important, but um, it was certainly a, uh, a very welcome, fresh thing or fresh experience with this format. And I also found it interesting that I don't really have the urge to expand or change the system at all. Um, with other modular I've built or like configured myself, there was always this thing, okay, I'll try this out as a first configuration and then after months or so I'll try something different and then of course after a week already I was like, yeah, maybe I could exchange the mixer for this other mixer and get this new VCO and um, of course there's not as much uh, things available for search format um, but also those 19 inch rack uh, modular rows also can't really be changed. I cannot put something else in there um, and that kind of makes me focus a little bit more on what I have um, and I don't, yeah, like I said, feel this need to expand all the time, which is good um, in like this gas-fueled uh, Eurorack uh, economy we're living in nowadays. Okay, so this is the part now where I ask you to post questions and comments that you might have. I'd be happy to go into more detail when it comes to those modules or with buying decisions or something else, 
keep in mind, I'm not really an expert on these things. I've just had that for a year and I've enjoyed it. Um, but uh, yeah, shoot me your questions. Um, of course, if you haven't already, subscribe for more videos like that. Um, like if you like it. If you don't like it, of course, you can post your thumbs down or you can also tell me in the comments why you didn't like it. And um, I'll see if I change something or I might not, depending on how fun this is to record these slightly rambly videos from now on. But I hope this was fun, of course, for you or interesting. And I look forward to talk to you about this. And if you want to know some other stuff or have an idea for another video blog like video, just let me know in the comments as well. So thanks a lot for watching and see you very soon.